Hello! In this video, we will discuss the structure of a literature review. We'll cover the purpose of the lit review, the two connected arguments you make with your lit review, and the funnel shaped structure of an effective lit review. Your literature review has a very important purpose. You're helping your reader understand what is already known about your topic, which then helps them understand what your research project is and why it's so important. To achieve this purpose, you will make two arguments. The first argument sets your reader up to understand and accept the second argument. In the argument of discovery, you help your reader discover what is already known about the topic. This is background information. What does your reader need to know in order to get your project? What do the experts already know? Try to synthesize the knowledge explaining the big picture instead of line by line summarizing, Smith says this and Rodriguez says that and Suzuki says the opposite. This argument of discovery sets your reader up for the next argument, the argument of advocacy. Now the reader understands the background information, you can start to illustrate what is not known and therefore why your project is necessary. You're advocating for the importance of your project. Those two arguments are the bulk of your literature review. Let's talk now about the structure of the literature review, which we describe as a funnel. In the funnel format, you take your reader from very general to very specific understanding. You start from what is this thing we're talking about? And lead your reader by the hand until they arrive at understanding why your study is needed to fill this very specific gap in knowledge. Here's a diagram of what the funnel might look like. You start very broad at the top with background information about what is already known. Even in the background information section, you go from general to specific, narrowing as you go. Next, you get more specific as you start to critique the literature. What is not known? What gaps do we need to fill? Finally, you arrive at the star of the show, justifying your project. Hopefully this reminds you of something we discussed earlier, the two arguments. The two arguments, discovery and advocacy, happen in this funnel structure. The top of the funnel is where you make your argument of discovery, where you show what is already known. The bottom of the funnel, where you get more focused, is where you make your argument of advocacy, where you explain that there are gaps in the knowledge that your study will help fill. So that's the general funnel-shaped structure of a literature review. Now let's talk about how to identify the information you need for each stage of the funnel and each construct. Now, when I say construct, I just mean big idea or concept. This will become more clear when we show examples. Let's look at an example of a literature review from a real life psychology article. The title is The Moderating Role of Resiliency on the Negative Effects of Childhood Abuse for Adolescent Girls Involved in Child Welfare. The biggest main ideas here seem to be childhood abuse and resiliency. Let's call those our two constructs. What would we expect to see in this literature review? As we work through the literature review, we'll provide answers to these questions. This is not a mandatory and exhaustive checklist of things we must answer, just a general guideline. We may choose to emphasize some areas and skip others, depending on the topic of the paper. Basically, in the background section, we'd expect definitions, statistics, and explanations of what the construct is. In the next section, we talk about how the constructs interact with each other and any gaps we notice in the literature. Here's the funnel for our real life example of an article on resiliency and child abuse. We identified two different main ideas, childhood abuse and resiliency. In the real life literature review, we'd start by introducing the first main idea, childhood abuse. We'd explain what this is, who it affects, how common it is, and so on. Next, we'll introduce the other main idea, resiliency. This is also background information about the definition, how it happens, and so on. However, our focus is slightly narrower than it was in the first part, since we're mostly talking about resiliency as it relates to childhood abuse. Now our reader has enough background knowledge to understand what we're talking about. We can narrow our focus a little more. We'll look at the two constructs combined. How do they interact with each other? Does one have an effect on the other? 
Are they correlated in some way? We've established the background information and shown our reader what is already known on this topic. Now we move into the critique part. We just showed what is known, but what is not known? These studies came close to what I want to know. Here's what they found, but I still need to know blank. That's why my study is necessary. It will fill the gap in blank. Now we're really building momentum. Our reader is starting to understand that there's a real need for new research in this area. We then bring it home and justify the study. Clearly explain the reason for your research. Make it compelling for your reader to get invested in your research. I hope this video has helped you understand the purpose, arguments, and structure of a literature review. If you need help finding sources for the information in your literature review, contact a librarian. They would be happy to help.